Welcome, welcome to Never Dull Moment. I'm Greg Blythe, and uh, I'm happy to share a new item in our world. Um, you may have been a hand sharpener on whetstones and maybe spied on the internet the 20K and 30K stones, and you kept thinking to yourself, why slash wow, how much are they? They're expensive. And I kept thinking of them as like a status thing because I kept seeing $300 why do I need to go there? Um, very fortunate for me that I happened to end up with one. Um, so this is the Nanohone 30K stone. And one of the things I love about Hap and his company, Nanohone, if you think about the name, nano meaning fine, hone meaning sharpening, he really adheres to trying to make sure that, that every single thing is as tight of a spec that you could possibly get. Um, I got a chance to talk to him today on the phone. I have not opened this at all, so I have not seen it, used it, or anything. And I also talked to Scott Gunn at Gunny Juice, who makes a 0 .5, con 0 .5 micron diamond emulsion, because this is a 0 .5 micron stone. And I wanted to talk to them about their thoughts on a diamond emulsion versus a stone. So first of all, let's go ahead and get the stone out. And what's always funny about uh, no. nano products is the <laughs> specs are so tight, getting the boxes open can seem quite impossible. Um, and Hap thinks that's great. Yep. I mean, he definitely gets the measurements so amazing that it's actually hard to get the boxes open. And you never want to tear the box, Hap. I can hear him chuckling. Yeah, the, the frustration <laughs> of the measurements being so perfect. Okay. There we go. We finally got it. Okay. You can see the hands are dirty because we've been sharpening. And if you look at the workshop, Whoa. we've got every different stone in the world from King to Tajiro to Naniwa to, yeah. to everybody. <laughs> um, even, we, even we've had Nano Hone out. So... Oh, he went a little beautiful on his 0.5 micron. Got a little pattern. Let me see on the back of the other stuff that he has uh, any of that. The other stones. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't get all pretty on the other ones. This is the 10K. Yeah, that one's definitely cool. It's special. So it is cool. special. Okay, and so we're going to go ahead, since he's, you know, got all these beautiful holes for us, we've got the Nano Hone sink bridge and base. We'll put that down, and let's talk about what we're doing and why we're doing it. Okay, so I talked to half about the creation of the stone, and this, these are ceramics, okay? So as far as the material, this is a high-press ceramic. And what he did was, is he actually, for every kilogram of dust, of particles, he had to sift it to only get like 100 grams. So you're talking one-tenth of what he sifted through was actually a fine enough particle and adhered to the specs of making sure you don't have like an odd size piece inside of it. So everything in here is gonna be as tight a quality as you can get to get that 0.5 micron size. If you think of uh, Scott Gunn's product, Gunny Juice, or anybody who's making a 0.5 micron, their goal is to take diamonds to put it in uh, some type of suspension. So whether it's you know, a water or oil-based, it's got to adhere to leather or some type of material. It could be jeans for all I know. And then what's gonna happen is the diamonds are gonna be loose particles. We, when we think of emulsion, we think of polishing, but we really think of stropping. So as we take the edge of the knife and we put it onto the leather, the leather has a little bit of give, you, hopefully it's a very hard leather, something that's got a lot of resistance, but the diamonds are sitting loose. And so they're able to move and abrade the material that's on the edge of the knife, that the burr that you have made, and it's going to free away that particular material. So even though as you take the knife and you push it on the leather, you are technically polishing. And if you've ever seen Scott's work, the finish he gets is absolutely amazing. You can press too hard, and in things like leather, you could roll the edge. I mean, you're getting the edge of the knife that's like the size of a human hair or half the size of a human hair. 
and you can press into the leather and, and rub. But the good thing about those diamonds are they are a braiding material and they're going inside the little grooves and kind of abrading. These particles are fixed. You know, they are in a flush, flattened adhesive that's going to let you push the knife at the sharpening angle that you have. So you're definitely going to get that polished edge. Not only this is going to be great for knives, this is amazing for razor blades. If you're a straight razor shaver, and especially if you're a tool user, if you're using woodworking, and you have to have that really fine edge for woodwork, um, you're gonna wanna use this particular stone. So it wasn't necessarily thought of originally for knives in the sense that it was thinking, you're thinking for a razor blade, you're thinking for knives, but you're also thinking for woodworking. And what he did was he had three different designs. He went through a lot of different designs, but he had three different designs and he sent them out to a bunch of woodworkers and all the woodworkers came back and they kept picking the same exact design. So he went into the field, he got people to use the product, they kept coming back and saying, this is the one and that's what he ended up with. He was excited for me to use it and I'm gonna use it today. So if you happen to watch last week's video, which I'll put a link above, we took a white number one steel and we got it pretty sharp. Now I got it to like sub 100, 100 of sharpness. And so, and I haven't used the knife. The knife was simply put up um, only for like an hour because we're shooting this episode the same, you know, right after the other episode. So the knife has not been used other than on uh, best tester and paper. And so I am going to go ahead and dirty up this stone. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it feels. Should feel like glass. So let's just go ahead and take and put a little uh, water. Hap always has that. If you ever see him in person, he has this really cool like spray pressurized yeah. water bottle that he uses. Yeah. Um, so things that I would tell you not to do. You would not do edge leading strokes. Um, on anything higher than 8K. 8K is where you're going to go. So you're going to be using... Does it need to be flattened? I want to say... Okay. I don't know. Sorry. So my wife asked the question, and this is a little nerve-wracking. It's a good question, so it's not on her. You can make the assumption that Hap did a great job with his manufacturing to make sure it came flat. But let's say you want to go the extra step and make sure it's flat. Well, what do you flatten it with, Greg? It's a 30K stone. I don't know. And the thing of it is, is he and I actually had that conversation today. If I use the Atoma products, would come in different plates. The finest that they have is 1200. I would end up putting grooves on the stone. And then even though the particles themselves are 30K, I might end up making a grooved pattern, so I would probably stay away from the Atoma. Now, he did not tell me to tell you that. He has not tested the Atoma products on his 30K stone, so he, he told me not to, to say on behalf of the company that they said that. I'm saying to you, let's just think logically about 1200 grit grooves in our stone. I did ask him about his products, and he said that the NL6, which I don't have, the NL8, which is discontinued, which I do have. That needs to be. And the NL10. The NL10 is this stone, this lapping plate, wider. So even though if you, if you happen to own the NL8, I'm gonna you can it. use it because the diamond buttons are so fine that you actually can use it on here. So... Per my wife's request, I'm gonna, are you, speak out loud. Are don't we, do, give me hand signals. They don't know what you're... Huh? Are we doing it or not? Yeah, I was going to get a pencil out. Well, then, okay, hand me that so I can get it all rinsed off really well. There's nothing else on it. I did that earlier, but yeah, go ahead and do it again. Because I haven't used it today at all on anything. I washed it earlier today. And let's find a pencil. Do you have one over there, Ben? I do. Well, I guess we're going to find out if it's flat out of the box. So, just for the record, this knife has been sharpened up to a 10K and used 
If you haven't saw the other episode, it has been used um, with a kangaroo strop, which is still hanging, both the rough side and the other side. Then it was put on a, excuse me, a one micron strop and then finished on 0.5 micron gunny juice on gunny cloth. So the knife has actually been finished to that point. Ah. I need some water. Okay, I need some water. Water. Sorry, guys. That just... Sorry, I freaked out. No nasty water on Okay. Me. He's special. So if you're going to go through the trouble of buying a $230 30K stone, which I have to say is about $70 cheaper than most of the other ones, I cannot remember right off the bat how much the Shapton one is. I think it's $300. I could be wrong, so please don't yell at me in the comments. You can just do me a favor and comment so I know. Um, and if I find out, I'll put it on the screen. Okay. How does it feel? Well, you can't hear it. It's, I know. I was like, well, that's really... Shh. That's shh approved. So how much pressure should be doing? None. I mean, the, it's <laughs> you're polishing. You're not trying to get a burr. I'm moving the knife around and I'm making sure that all the strokes are edge trailing. I do not want to pull this blade into the stone. Um, edge leading strokes would be bad on such a fine edge. But it is very glassy and at the same time soft. Uh, the Naniwa products are a lot harder. So I'm glad to... Um, it's not muddy, but it leans towards that. I mean, I'm sorry that I can't find better words for you. Right now it's just sliding. It's it's so quiet. I was just gonna say it's incredible how much you how you can't hear like you're just it's odd to see you on a stone and not hear some sort of yeah i feel like i'm ice skating <laughs> like i'm just like just just strokes you know because you are This is the Hap Stanley stroke right here, right, honey? Mm-hmm. My wife had the privilege of learning how to sharpen from Hap himself. I still haven't done it, Hap. And if you guys haven't seen any of those shorts, I'll put a link above. And he came to the house here in Myrtle Beach and filmed using our products of his. We had fun. He didn't get anything out of his car. We owned everything. Go get your clean towel. It's not so much a clean towel. It's like I don't even want to put it on a towel. Well, don't do the edge at all. Just do, you know, pin, pinch, I'm like from, laying. pinch from the back and do this without getting... Oh, gosh, please do not cut your damn finger through that uh, towel. I didn't. You I, saw the blade was sticking straight up in the air. I couldn't tell from my angle. I'm sorry. Okay. Stop. 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 
stop, dude. I'm trying to make it so you can see any polish that might be on the edge. So you would just, I mean, the edge is so fine. I mean, if you think about it, this stone would last you forever because of how little pressure. That side was better with the lighting. I can see more. You would be putting on the stone. And again, if you're a person who loves your straight razor, then that's for you. Um, so what's it like to have a 30K stone in the house? If I was using a 30K stone on a knife, if I was going to take the time to take a knife up to 30K, I'm probably going to be doing this on the backside of all my single bevel knives. So if I've got a Deba, if I have a Yanagaba, and I'm doing fish in particularly, you know, fish, you don't want tethered edges. You know, you eat with your eyes. And so having those clean edges on the fish, if you're a sushi chef, you need that. A knife generally needs a little bit more bite for fatty food, things with the skin. So how often would you be pulling out the 30K? If you are in a fish restaurant doing the finer things in life, um, yes. If, you are, if, you have a, if you're a tool, a woodworker, if you've got tools, and if you own a straight razor, yes. Um, I will say that, you know, nano home products are all obviously great, but you're getting into it a little better price point. Um, and we appreciate Hap letting us have, you know, a little taste of the high life. I'm going to say it is a bit bougie, but thanks Hap. <laughs> but thanks Hap. It is a bit bougie to say that you have a 30 K stone. Um, I did make it a point to talk to uh, Hap in particular and Scott just to get both of their independent feelings. Nano Home goes up to 10K and then jumps to 30. Um, some other companies make a 12, a 15, even a 20. Can you make the jump? Hap says yes. Scott says yes. So if you had that question, I'm glad we got it answered from two sources, not just the man himself, but another independent person. So if you do own something like a 10K and you want to jump to the 30, that's why Hap made the jump. He didn't do anything in the between. So again, um, this stone should be in our arsenal for quite a long time. I just looked it up on their website, $230. I could not find it at a better price. You might've seen like a show price. I think some people got a little bit cheaper, maybe at a show. Um, but again, Hap, thanks for letting us do it. I look forward to uh, get using it when we start polishing knives and getting a little bit better with polishing knives. The finish should be outrageous. Okay, so I'm going to definitely put a link in the description to Nano Home. And again, thank you guys for your support always. We appreciate you checking in with us Friday nights at 8. God bless.